Um, typically what will happen is we we'll partner with our, with our local agencies, and in the past, uh, going back when we first started this program, Springfield, Holyoke, and Chicopee in particular, and we will roll out along with their assets and their resources a force package from the state police that this grant funding makes uh, possible for us. And that typically would involve our violent fugitive unit, our gang unit, state police detectives unit for the particular jurisdiction involved, it's signed to the district attorney's office, of course, uh, uh, directed patrols, which is a uniform function, uh, community action teams, which are specialized uni uniform uh, teams that go into communities. Uh, we have also utilized our uh, SINRETS, which is a Commonwealth Interstate uh, Narcotic Reduction Enforcement teams that do longer term drug trafficking organization, typically opiate or fentanyl based. And uh, we also use our high risk victims trafficking unit. Uh, we've, we've applied this along with our partners uh, very successfully. Uh, in a moment, I'll ask Christine to share some statistics with you. Uh, but to date, as of this morning, uh, this funding has allowed us to partner with our, our friends in law enforcement in the cities of Springfield and Holyoke for the last two years. Chicopee, Lawrence, Taunton, and Brockton for the last year will be in Fall River uh, this year. We are in Boston year-round. Uh, and and these, these statistics that you will hear have been gleaned from the experiences that we have uh, uh, participated in. in those. Uh, I think that it's, it's a, uh, a credit to everyone that when you end up working collaboratively, uh, you know, when you, when you put uh, good cops together and you put them on the street, good things tend to happen. That's really the basic uh, premise of this operation. Uh, statistically, I, I do want to say it is important to understand that while there are a number of causal factors that impact violent crime, violent crime rates, crime reduction statistics, uh, what we have learned is that at the very least, the statistical information supports the value and the success of these grant funded initiatives. Um, in particular, what happens with us is the grant funding allows us to extend the operational period. So in other words, uh, whereas before we, we would uh, get into a partnership and, and try to work collaboratively and cooperatively, a typical shift being eight hours. This allows us to extend out to 12 hours, even even 16 hour shifts, where we're out on the street, we're more visible, we're more proactive, and we're taking more action. Uh, that is one of the great benefits of the funding, um, and that that is one of the great uh, reasons for the success. So, I will tell you that Christine Foley here is uh, probably the, the the hero of the MSP. But sometimes unrecognized. We appreciate what she does. She's been tracking these numbers since 2021. She's done an outstanding job. She prepares an executive level briefing that, that makes its way to the cabinet or has made its way to the cabinet in the past. It incorporates all the information that we share with our local partners. And I will ask Christine to, uh, to give you some of that information uh, right now. And before Christine starts, I, I just want to emphasize a couple of points. This is a two prong approach. It's outreach and support in the communities, and it, there's the law enforcement. And what's really important is the state police are there for support. The key on the law enforcement side are the local police departments. They know their communities. They know who the impact players are. And what we try to do is bring additional services and additional help from the state police, because the state police can't do it alone. They're there for support, and it's the local police departments, whether it's Worcester, Springfield, Boston, everywhere in between. They're the key to this, and we can bring resources and help us when anything flares up and to really focus on those communities that need it the most. Thanks. I think, I think to that end, if I could, I think it's important to know, okay, in terms of the two-pronged approach, some of the initiatives that we share with our local partners currently are our basketball programs always worked volunteer basis with our local partners are in the following communities. We're in Springfield, Hadley, West Springfield, Chicopee, Amherst, Worcester, Fall River, Brockton, New Bedford, Boston, Cape Cod, and Quincy. We're in development for the fall for Woburn, Lynn, Lowell, and Lawrence. Our programs include self-defense for women, fall, volleyball, boxing, classroom discussions, mentorship, field trips with troopers, and the, and the other thing we're looking to branch out into is uh, uh, literacy programs, uh, technology programs, the arts, uh, these, these exist kind of in a parallel world as the enforcement efforts, but they are uh, evidence of that two-pronged approach that the Secretary spoke of, and I appreciate you bringing that up, sir. Uh, I'll turn it over to Christine Foley. Thank you so much, sir. Um, as the Colonel mentioned, I have been tracking the Safer Community Initiative staffs since May of 2021. We've been the 
the WMI, the Western Mass Initiative, began. included three communities, two of which were Springfield and Polio. The statistics deemed, um, or drum statistics, we derived as part of that. Over 330 arrests were made, arrests were summons. Um, more than 50 firearms were seized. More than four kilograms of um, heroin or fentanyl. Two kilos of crack or cocaine were also seized. At that time, Springfield reported one firearm related homicide compared to that were reported for the previous, for the same time frame in the previous year. Leo reported one firearm related homicide compared to the three that were reported in the same time frame in the previous year. As the Colonel mentioned, there are obviously a bunch of different things that go into that, but we wanted to mention that. Um, Operation Shotstopper started in 2021 as well and included the communities of Boston, Lawrence, and Houghton. And then in 2022, JAG initiative, um, which included Boston, Lawrence, Brockton, Springfield, and Holyoke. As a result of the 2022 initiatives, um, 349 arrests were summoned to me, 95 firearms were seized, more than 44 kilos of heroin or fentanyl were seized, and almost three kilos of crack or cocaine were seized. For Springfield in 2022, um, the Springfield PD reported five shots fired all during the months of July through October of 2022, compared to the or down from the down from the 190 that were reported the previous year. Springfield also reported a decrease in the number of victims of firearms of aggravated assault with firearm, a 17 percent increase in the number of firearms seized in 2022 compared to. Polio reported a decrease in the number of aggravated assaults and firearms during the same time period in 2022 was the first time we were in Brockton as part of the Safer Community Initiatives. Um, as part of that, there were 62 arrests made and 8 firearms seized. During that time period, July through September of 2022, Brockton reported zero firearm-related murders and three were reported the prior year. Brockton also reported a decrease in the number of aggravated assaults with firearms in 2022 compared to 2021. And just to give everybody an idea of how these safer community initiatives have um, the, the stats that have derived over the past two years, there have been almost 1,100 arrests or uh, arrest or summons as part of this. 235 firearms have been seized. 51 kilos of heroin or fentanyl have been taken off the streets. Eight kilos of crack or cocaine have also been taken off the streets. More than five kilos of meth have been taken off the streets as part of these initiatives. I think it's important to note too that when we're talking about the statistical information that comes from these, these are statistics that are generally the three to six months long, it's not an entire calendar year. So we're, we're, you know, we're in these communities as long as we can sustain that and as long as the, 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 that the, the funding allows, which is, uh, uh, allows us to extend that operational period that we spoke of. And so uh, these aren't year round statistics. It, they're pretty impressive when you look at them through the lens of maybe three, possibly six months. The one uh, exception to that is in the city of Boston, our gang unit is embedded with a violent strike force. That's a, that's a 12 month endeavor with their all the time with Boston PD, and, uh, and we've seen some great successes in that partnership as well. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Christine. Thanks. Um, w with that, um, I want to take this opportunity to introduce Governor Healy. We wouldn't be here without Governor Healy's support, her focus on this issue, her focus on making communities better and safer, and working with law enforcement and all our community partners. Uh, I want to thank the governor for coming out here to Worcester, and, and with that, uh, Governor Healy. Well, thank you, Secretary. It's um, it's great to be here with all of you. I apologize, but we do have a budget now, so that's good, and uh, we were getting after it this morning. Uh, some work to do there. Um, 
I, I really wanted to come both to listen and to hear directly from those on the front lines. I wanted to uh, thank you all for your partnership across uh, so many fronts. I wanted to uh, also celebrate with our grant recipients um, who, are, who are out there making things happen. Um, but look, uh, m many of you I, I know me as, as, as the former Attorney General. I had the privilege of learning from many of you, working with many of you over the years. I understand firsthand the importance, the imperative of making sure that we fund the kinds of programs that are getting funded through the Safer Communities Initiative. And I want to begin by thanking uh, Secretary Reedy and the EOPS team. Uh, thank you to the Colonel. Thank you, Christine, for recounting those statistics everybody um, at EOPS for the work done day in and day out. I want to thank our district attorneys for the critically important work that, that you and your teams do in keeping our community safe and, and, and healthy. And again, um, just appreciate the partnership. Uh, we have a number of folks, I think, represented from various municipalities, our city uh, leaders, our mayors, our uh, town managers. Thank you for helping set the tone in communities uh, and making sure that, that you know, we're working in partnership to get resources where they need to be. Uh, to our community leaders and youth advocates, um, you're the key ingredient to the success of, of these programs. It's one thing to provide the money, but you know we also have to make sure that it's getting used uh, to its maximum benefit, and we thank, thank you for that. And I began with a comment about the budget. I want to thank and acknowledge, I see Senator Moore here, Representative O'Day. Um, I believe we have with us Representative LaBeouf, uh, Representative Paulino. We may have others from the legislature. Thank you, because it is through your efforts that we actually have this funding, which I'm uh, proud and pleased to be able to direct um, out, I think, our legislative partners. Um, you know, again, I know that for us to be successful as a state, it is all about teamwork, it is all about collaboration and partnership, and that's what this kind of program and initiative represents. So I thank you for doing that uh, and being, being so critical in, in that endeavor. I also want to acknowledge that the way these the way these grants go out, we know all communities are different. There are some commonalities among communities, but this cannot be a one-size-fits-all application, which is why they're targeted and distributed across communities so that you're able to uh, really tailor it to what fits the needs within your communities. But again, um, thank you, and particularly to those in law enforcement in these times, um, keeping people safe, giving people the assurance um, that they're safe, and you know, doing, doing the hard work. I think at a time when we've seen the exacerbation, it seems, of mental health issues across communities, um, certainly exacerbated through COVID, but, you know, that has been building. We know we, we need to do all we can to get resources to those on the front lines as well as, as residents across communities, access to, to mental health resources. Um, substance use disorder continues to be something that, that plagues too many of our communities. So know that the team, this administration, is looking forward to continuing to work with all of you to meet the moment and these challenges. And I'll turn it back to you, Secretary. Thank you, Governor. Uh, with that, we're, we're going to go around the round table and have each of the communities that are present and give you an outline of how they're using the funding in their communities. And we're going to start with District Attorney Joe Early and, and the folks from Worcester. Joe. Mm -hmm. Mr. Secretary, we want to make sure, if, you, if you've got a comment or two um, uh, about, uh, and I'm looking at you, uh, D.A. Morrissey, we'll keep it tight, but if you have a comment or two about things we should be doing that you think that we need to know, <laughs> that's why we're starting with D.A. Early. No. <laughs> oh. Well, it all comes back to whenever you can uh, give a nod to Quincy, we do. Um, I didn't see you. To see you. Thank you. DA Early. Uh, thank you for hosting us here today, too. No, that, that was easy. Um, thank you, Governor. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your leadership on this. And uh, thank you to Terry Reedy for bringing it back to Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you did hear he went to school here, and he lived about a block and a half from here, all right? Um, but Governor Healy, thank, thank you for this. Uh, when you look around this room and see the collaboration of law enforcement, uh, you know, community partners, elected officials, 
this, there's a quote from my, my dad, I, I never forget, good things in God don't happen by accident, they happen because of hard work in, in uh, prevention and intervention and safety a, a second to none. And it's because of your hard work in doing this and we can't do anything, I'll quote my dad again, you can't do anything without the money. And uh, yeah, thank you for the funding. Thank you for the funding. And I want to thank you for being here. I, I guess I'm tasked with thanking everybody for being here. If I forget someone, uh, I didn't make this list. Uh, <laughs> Governor Healy and <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Terry Reedy. I want to thank Officer Grants and Research, Executive Director Kevin Stanton, Mass State Police Colonel Christine Foley, who we just heard from, and I know there are other people from the State Police here. Police Chief Steve. He's just a great partner, not a good partner, a great partner, and shares the same ideals and goals that we all do, and there's a lot of chiefs here, and thank you for being here. Uh, Norfolk DA Michael Morrissey, Suffolk DA Kevin Hayden, uh, Essex DA Paul Tucker, uh, I, I haven't seen him, he may be here, Hampton County uh, DA Anthony Galuni, uh, Middlesex DA Marion Ryan, Northwestern, so Northwestern District Attorney, recovering from some surgery, David Sullivan, Plymouth ADA John Box, stepping in for Timmy Cruz. Uh, Bert Shear, First Assistant DA, Marion Shelby, uh, Ju Julia Supernon, and Aaron Kapler from that office. Also, a couple of my first assistants as well, Jeff Travers, Don Zenos, Eddie Kakasinas, um, Ellen Lazar, uh, and also uh, State Rep Jim O'Day, uh, State Rep David LaBeouf, State Rep Kate Donahue, State Senator Michael Moore, uh, Governor, you mentioned another State Rep that I don't have the name on, State Rep Polino. And I want to thank all elected officials, law enforcement partners and community partners for coming to Worcester for this event. You know, we know that working together is a force multiplier. I'm going to be brief. I'm going to be brief, and I hope we all are. Um, but it's a force multiplier. Uh, T Terry talked about a pro program operation night. Like, let, you know, Terry's great at, at, at throwing uh, compliments out to other people. That happened because of Terry Reedy. You know, that happened because of Terry Reedy and Governor, you made a great choice when you took him into the AG's office and you made a great choice when you made him secretary. Good things in government happened because of hard work. There were no shootings that summer. You know, probation officer uh, in ADA, uh, they'd go out, they'd knock on the door, and like Terry used to t tell us, you get a couple impact players, 90% of the shootings are gone. They're gone, just like that. Although it is getting worse now. So, then and now, we're focusing on introducing quality of life issues, making things better, empowering our at-risk youth, and we learn so much more about trauma now. It's crazy that we didn't deal with this in a different way before. High ACEs scores almost guarantee that 60% of those kids are going to be involved in the criminal justice system or are going to have a substance use disorder problem. We can make it better. And that, that's just what you're doing, Governor, by giving us this money. Funding for the intervention and we know, we know it's our most effective crime fighting tool, but it's always underutilized and it's always underfunded. But that is perhaps the most important way. You walk through the hallways here, you see Liz Hamilton's kids, okay? Um, you can't help but smile. But to so many of those kids, what they see on the streets, the trauma that they go through is horrible. In here, they're smiling. In here, a parent who's working two jobs gets them over here, and Liz and her staff take care of them, and they make them better. They deal with the trauma. They give them the warm hug. And it can't get to every kid they want because of the lack of funding, but not today. So, Governor, thanks for that. We're proud to partner with Stevie Sargent, the Worcester Police Department, Liz Hamilton, the Boys and Girls Clubs, and through the Safer Communities Initiative Grant to implement this two-pronged approach that focuses on helping at-risk youth and reducing gang and gun violence. The money's going to support 250 kids, 250 kids. Let me tell you, I can tell you what the headlines would be like if you didn't get to these 250 kids. It doesn't take an act of imagination. My fellow DAs, all our law enforcement partners know that the hardest part of the job is people in pain. But when you can do things like this, you just make it better for everyone. Um, a gun in off, a gun violence and gang prosecution unit, uh, Brett Dillon and Tim Westerman are here, you know, are seeing more and more activity. They're seeing more younger kids with guns. They're seeing more ghost guns. They're seeing things that you, you just scare and alarm you. But we know, we get them over here, 97% of the kids that get to the Boys and Girls Club who graduate high school go on to an institution of higher learning. Think about that, 97%. That's how we keep the justice system. Our gang unit had over 400 cases last year. 46% of those charged were under the age of 25. 
Those are alarming figures. This grant helps us build stronger cases with the people that are going, like I, I heard Billy Gross be, be, before say it when he was Commissioner of Austin, no matter what we do, 2% of the people are going to get, get resort to crime. But this helps us build stronger cases when it comes to those who are involved in crime. And also, on the other end, the valuable prevention resources right here in the community. We know that this is a winner. We know collaboration is the key. We know kids are 20% of our population, yet 100% of our future. And I grew up in the Ionic Ave Boys and Girls Club down the street. My mother had eight kids. She dropped us off there, and it was just like a babysitter. But it was those positive influence, you see, everyone at the Boys and Girls Club. And all these kids, they come here between the ages of 10 and 19, and they can take part in something. They don't get lost. They get support system here, and they keep an eye on them because they care. They get into good decision making. They're taught responsibility. They talk about good decisions. And the two programs that they have here work. The first, Passport to Manhood, helps young boys with leadership, character, and positive behavior. It gives them the tools. The Smart Girls program is geared toward health, fitness, prevention, education, and more. The programs show results. These kids have meaningful lives. They come out of here better. Now, the Department of Justice did a study and a survey that showed us the number one crime prevention, number one crime safety tool is prevention. If you can keep kids busy during the summer around responsible adults, and if you can keep them busy during the school year between these, the hours of three to six around responsible adults, you're going to keep the majority of these kids out of the criminal justice system. We focus on prevention because it's always underutilized. Um, but now, as I said, we're dealing more with trauma. And I've spoken too long. I can hear my father saying, Joey, they didn't come here to listen to you. So I'm going to end it. But there's a lot of good people in this room. There's a lot of people with a lot of passion in this room. Uh, and, and that's how things work. My fellow DAs, people like Stevie Sargent, the Boys and Girls Clubs, the other chiefs, people in the community, the governor, in, in the state police, Terry, by giving us this opportunity, you're making life better. And that is good government. That's something else my dad would say. Uh, but he's the reason I got into this job. So thank you for that. And, and it, my grant writer, Amy Coogan, there is no one more important in my office than Amy Coogan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, will we go right around the table? Sure. Thanks for being brief, Joe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joe said everything that needed to be said about our community, but I would like to say that it is about relationships, relationships, and we have a great relationship with, obviously, with our district attorney, who is second to none, our Boys and Girls Club, who we've been with since, since I've been a young police officer. I'm actually a graduate of the Lincoln Square Boys Club, came to the Lincoln, to the Ionic Boys Club, and then when I got on the job, I actually signed up for the, we signed up for this boys club so we could train with our police athletic league. And we've had some tremendous success with the boys and girls club, but just with the individuals. One of our, one of our graduates uh, was a professional fighter, is now a state police, Edwin. As you know, I'm, I don't know if you know Edwin, but uh, he graduated here. Edwin is... Uh, was a professional fighter, went on to do some championship fights. Jose Rivera, who's another world champion, came out of this Boys and Girls Club. Uh, just, just a tremendous program, and it is all about relationships. But I would like to, I, I will be brief. I just want to uh, thank, thank our partners, of course, Joe and uh, the Boys and Girls Club, EOPS under Terry Reedy, who has been nothing but a tremendous partner, the governor's office. And, um, you know, we cannot do it alone in this business. It's about community, it's about neighborhoods, and it's about relationships. And this, this program will help us to prevent violence in our neighborhoods, gun violence in our neighborhoods, and that is the most important part. One step at a time, one foot in front of the other, we will get it done, but we have to do it together. So thank you for having me. Looking forward to the conversation, and welcome to our great city of Hi everyone, Liz Hamilton, Executive Director, CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Worcester. Welcome to our house. Uh, this is the home to about 8,000 youth that we serve every year, uh, ages 5 to uh, 19. And uh, we're thrilled uh, to be hosting this, but also um, it's always great to hear from others about what they're doing that's successful in their communities. 
Uh, one thing that we've learned at the Boys and Girls Club of Worcester is that youth voice matters. So all of our programs, Rez Ed, Boxing, Music Recording Studio, they all were created because our youth told us that's what they wanted. So I think that's a really key, uh, key component to prevention and intervention work is really listening to the kids that you're serving, hearing from them what they want. And what we heard loud and clear, especially middle school kids, is they didn't always want to be with the stinky boys or the stinky girls. They wanted to have their separate uh, gender-specific program. So uh, we have made sure that we have gender-specific programming, like DA early said, uh, uh, the Smart Girls program for girls and the uh, Passport to Manhood for boys, but then where they also can practice and learn in a co-ed uh, exhibit and, and experience. So it's really important to be able to do that together. Uh, we also make sure, uh, again, from what we've heard from our kids, is they want to have a mentor, a mentor who looks like them. Important safety, right? Safety in numbers. So those, those relationships are invaluable. And, you know, with this funding, I think that, because um, everybody has a problem of recruitment and retention right now. I think we're down 40 or 50 um, officers. We're having a real difficult time recruiting. Uh, we're having a real diff difficult time retaining. People are leaving in droves. Um, so that relationship with the state police and the ability to fund those operations um, and those relationships are, are very from the side. And with that, I'll turn you over to my grant. Good morning, Brian Bellavo. Um, so uh, thank you, ma'am, sir, for having us. Um, I would just say that uh, I was fortunate enough initially in 2021 to be a lieutenant in the firearms unit uh, and was part of the initial implementation of the VCI. Uh, we worked with uh, the state police gang unit and we had a very successful um, run that year. I'd like to think that um, based on the numbers presented that we had a better year the second time around because we had improved relationships in between the two of us. It's, Springfield's always had a strong working relationship with MSP, but I think that that focused approach, that tailored approach to your point of how we were going to do things in the city uh, netted results and we're obviously looking forward to uh, maintaining that relationship and, and moving forward. Uh, the biggest key being to develop uh, sustainable uh, outcomes that won't necessarily always be reliant on funding, but that those relationships and communication exist to work together. So again, I thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I'll introduce you to our cohort here. So we've had some exciting changes in Springfield with regards to our um, uh, organizations within the city for community outreach. And we are very much so looking forward to uh, leveraging those relationships and expanding our prevention and our intervention piece. So, uh, Mr. Bayman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, Secretary Reedy. Uh, my name is Solomon Bayman. I'm here on behalf of ROCA. I'm the director of uh, ROCA Western Mass. Um, there's a ton of going on in Western Mass as far as our partnerships and relationships. I have to figure that that. that. Um, Springfield PD, Holyoke PD, and just the referral source, how amazing it's been for us to uh, be able to reach so many youth, high-risk youth, ages 17 to 24. We're currently serving in Western Mass, Springfield, actually 285 um, young men and 90 uh, young moms between Springfield and Holyoke. Um, and we're targeting high-risk youth uh, that carry guns, criminal backgrounds, and just Process, get them out of that bottom brain, thinking that survival brain, and get them to the top brain portion where they're actually acting on their values, not their emotions. Uh, we'd like to thank the mayor's office in Springfield, Mayor Sarno. He's allowed about 25 of our youth to work throughout the city um, at four days a week and the fifth day. They're actually uh, programming, which reduces the, the rate of recidivism. Same thing in Holyoke, we got another 10 youth working throughout the community there and also in the, in the city of Chicopee. And again, all those youth, um, they're with us. Also, um, I'd like to thank Bay State, another community partner. We have a hospital-based violence intervention program for all non-fatal shootings. Uh, we respond to them when they're in our age group, and we 
we're able to uh, respond to the hospital, employ the staff out there and try to build that connection or that relationship uh, to get that youth, again, to act on his values before he reacts emotionally. Uh, also, uh, DA Galuni, Western Mass, we have our EACH program, which is our Emerging Court of Hope, which is a second chance program. Um, it's a very intense four-phase program. Where when District Attorney Shagru first came into when District Attorney Shagru first came into office, he invested in a Department of Community Engagement with the sole purpose of providing proactive programs to eliminate criminal involvement in the first place. This grant being the first one to come in to really fund those programs is extremely helpful and we're very thankful for that. I found it really inter interesting you brought up the Court of Hope. Um, District Attorney Shagru actually brought part of starting that Court of Hope and we hope to bring it into our office. It's pretty phenomenal. I started my career as a teacher uh, in Boston and I can speak from firsthand experience that when kids are involved in programs like the Boys and Girls Club, like so many of the programs you all are starting today, uh, it is a game changer. When they're allowed to do something after school and in the summer, it makes such an incredible difference. With this grant funding, we uh, specifically worked with community partners one and one today to enroll three programs that are already in existence. Berkshire County has 32 cities and towns. We're very unique. We're the most rural county. Uh, we border Vermont, Connecticut, and New York. It's impossible to say we're just going to invest in one city or two cities because we are also interconnected. With that, we've partnered with Roots Rising. Uh, I'll let you speak to that. We've partnered with uh, a program called If I Ran. What this money is being used for is to support the Berkshire County Law Enforcement Task Force. Years ago, it was called the Berkshire County Drug Task Force, run out of the State Police uh, Detective Unit. But what it recognizes now is that there needs to be connections between all of our towns and cities because we are seeing drugs coming into our county borders and over the lines because we also touch Hamden and Hampshire. Um, and what we have seen by focusing in on individuals, the officers know those areas. So if we have officers from North Adams working with the Pittsfield officers, they can identify and specially target certain individuals. And that's where a lot of this money and funding is going for. It's for the training, for their safety, and then proactive enforcement. And one of the biggest problems we have in Berkshire County is cell service is horrible. Um, is being used for is to provide these officers with radios so they can be in constant communication with one another if there is not going to be any type of cell service. That's for law enforcement safety. It's also for good communication. Um, ballistic shields, something as simple as that. A number, number of these towns do not have the ability but yet we're going into houses, to trap houses, in rural areas in Cheshire, down in South County in New Marlboro, and these officers were ill-equipped to go into a house where, frankly, we're of guns. So for safety now, the Berkshire County um, Law Enforcement Task Force works together, and we, utilizing their combined skills, it's actually been very productive. Um, since January, we've taken over 26 guns off the street. Um, and of those guns, all but two were directly related to narcotics trafficking. And what we noticed was that these individuals are not from the Berkshires. Uh, we were up on a large scale wire and um, significant quantities were coming in from the Bronx. Pittsfield uh, using drug houses, utilizing, utilizing addicts to sell their drugs from. Um, they were using a motel or hotel right across the street from the district attorney's office. Literally, our drug task force could look out the window and watch the, watch their room. So that was one of the ways that we were able to start putting money into the wires. And the Berkshire County uh, Drug Unit and the t uh, Law Enforcement Task Force has a wire room that can be utilized by all members of the Berkshire County Task Force. In towns that are not large enough to have that money office utilizing um, that for their their needs and the proactive enforcement putting undercover officers on the street during community events uh, within the last year uh, since last a number of shootings and violent acts that were happening at community events 
utilize this for officers to be present in those um, areas. And if they see something starting, they can intervene before any further. And this time last year, there were 18 shootings in the city of Pittsfield by this time last year. And um, all but a couple were actually directly related to guns and violence, um, sorry, guns and drugs trafficking. At this point in time, as of, well, if this had happened a couple weeks ago, we would have been able to say zero. Um, however, we did have one shooting, although I'm pleased to report that it was nothing related to drug trafficking. It was um, a fight among two youngsters over a girl. And so that goes back to help these individuals start making better decisions. Uh, what started out as it should have just been a fist fight, one individual brought a gun and no record, he was 19 years old, no involvement with the court systems, and but for very quick acting on behalf of law enforcement to treat this individual, he would have gone from no record to a homicide. So um, we are heading in the right direction, and that thanks is um, largely due to this grant, so thank you very much. We're going to hand it over to Aaron next, who's one of our seeing um, the largest amount in partnering with a program called Roots Rise. Thank you so much for having me here and for being a recipient of this grant. Uh, it makes such a huge difference for a small organization like ourselves. So Roots Rising uh, started in 2017 to empower youth in those communities with food and farming, which may be not surprising, Berkshire County. So um, our vision is to lift up teams as community change makers strengthen the local food system of meaningful work. So, a couple of you have already mentioned here, I'm already hearing all the things, keeping them busy in the after school time, keeping them busy in the summer, and paying them. And so we hire our teams to work on farms, in food pantries, and in our own farmer's market, in right in the heart of, of Pittsfield. So Pittsfield, um, you know, the largest city in Berkshire County. We have 54% of our students enrolled in the Pittsfield Public Schools are disadvantaged. 24% of the youth under the age of 18 live in poverty. So, we already have kids facing many challenges, including food insecurity, family addiction struggles, feelings of isolation, feelings of isolation in Berkshire County. It's a big, it's a definitely a big issue, and especially coming after the pandemic, I feel even more isolated. Um, this is all compounded by an extreme mental health and the drug crisis that all of our people are facing. And for us, we're providing them with opportunities to reduce some time on the land, connecting to themselves, to each other, and to the earth. It's crucial work, and we believe it's a powerful antidote to many of the challenges faced by them. So in their in their cruise, so I'm using, I'm gonna emphasize the word cruise because we feel like it's really important that we're using positive group work for them instead of negative group work. A lot of you are talking about gangs. Um, this is a way for them to have a positive peer group and also, seeing the positive impact from this work in 2022, 92% of our group is less sad, less anxious, less lonely. 81% reported we had a stronger work ethic. 100% had local care for the workforce and 100 SXDA, I've been incredibly impressed by my colleagues' commitment to community engagement. So part of this funding we're going to do we're going to run a flag football camp in Lawrence. We're going to partner with the Department of Youth Services and do an art show. We have some local DJs that are going to be coming in. I spoke at a DYS graduation about a month ago, and I can see that there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of good work being done. Incredible work. We've decided to partner with them. We're spending an awful lot of time up in the Lawrence, Methuen, Haverhill area. And I just want to end, Governor, by saying what we're doing here, what you're doing, what the Secretary is doing, it's a signal. It's a signal to communities like Lawrence, and it's a signal to the people that care 
It's also a signal to law enforcement that we care the work that they're doing as well, that we'll back them up for the important work. Sometimes things that don't always make the headlines, these officers are working every single day. And I worry a lot about their mental health as well. We talk a lot about I think that this is one of those signals that we can say to law enforcement that we value what you are doing as well. So from a very grateful Essex County, thank you. Thank you. I'm Marion Ryan, the Middlesex District Attorney and Governor and Secretary Reedy. I want to thank you for this funding. And I echo what D.A. Tucker said. This really is a signal. It is a sign of the administration's commitment to these efforts. And in Middlesex County, we are going to use this money to continue two efforts that we have begun. And we hope that it will not only continue grants, but be money for future efforts. The first is with Middlesex County across our 54 cities and towns every day. We have a quarter of a million kids who go to school from kindergarten to 12th grade. I represent communities that have exceptional school systems. We have incredible resources. The legislature in Massachusetts has created an array of programs and funding for things that really should fix any need. But we all know that there are kids in all of our communities who are not thriving. And kids who don't thrive are the kids who find a home in a gang. And what we have begun in Middlesex County is a program to really reimagine how the education system works. Because even with that quarter of a million kids, you have to serve one child at a time. Because as the Secretary began by saying, if it's your child who gets into trouble, it doesn't matter what happened to all the other kids. And so we began to look at the social determinants that are not being addressed, despite the resources we have. And it began really with some research ago that said, and this is really remarkable when you think about it, of younger kids, the kids who are being disciplined and who are not coming to school, over 80% of them do not have access to good dental care. They're not getting their teeth cleaned, they're not getting fluoride put on their teeth, they're not eating well, and they're not sleeping well. And if you've ever had a toothache, think about how well you're playing with others when that's happening. So we began a program in Middlesex partnering with our colleges and community colleges programs to bring health care to our schools. We have a number of communities. We continue to grow that. We have now had several hundred kids who've had that fluoride, had those cleanings, been referred for other services. We wanted to broaden that program. And the educational piece of this grant, we will do that. Because what we know is it's not enough just to find that one child and identify the need and address it. You have to have a way to create a system for that. You have to go back and check to see if the services got there. Not how do you tinker with that to get to the right place? To help us to grow that piece, I'm really delighted to have with us today Mary Walsh, the executive director and creator of the Mary Walsh Center for the Thriving Child at Boston College. Mary saw this issue almost 40 years ago and created this program that really, to scale, shows people how to take a chaotic system and bring it down to one child. How to have people, as you heard from the Boys and Girls with that child, who that child and that family needs, and how to ensure that they're getting it. She's taken that program, it's been in the Boston Public Schools, it's grown across the country and also in Dublin. They're using that program to see that kids are thriving. So we have already identified four communities that we'll be partnering with that Mary, and she's joined by her colleague Joan Wasser Gish, who's the Director of Strategy at the Center, will be helping us. We know we are going to be doing the work that keeps some of these drugs off the street that are certainly impacting. So thank you both. Thank you for having us. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Baker. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary. Thanks for having me here today. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, we can talk about all the uh, community services and different programs that the police departments do around the Commonwealth. We all share them. Uh, I'm going to talk about the impact of when those programs are funded. Uh, I can speak to our own PAL program. We lost our boxing portion uh, due to funding due to losing space for the program. At the time, we lost that funding in the space for it.
be a program or something. I won't get into it. I know you mentioned that. gun violence um, in Boston um, and for initiatives like this like the Sabres Community Initiative it's so very important to uh, the work that, that we do and if you know, everyone's gonna have to bear with me a little bit I have uh, a little bit things are a little bit raw right now we had a, a tough night in Boston last night um, gun violence in Boston this grant opportunity and this funding is vitally important to some of the work that we're going to be doing. We will be focusing um, uh, these resources on particular communities in Jamaica Plain, in Roxbury, in Dorchester that are most impacted by shooting and violent crime. We've looked at particular hot spots uh, where our gun violence is, is at its highest, and we're directing our resources by pronged approach engaging with our community, employing intervention and prevention strategies along with targeted law enforcement uh, to make a difference, engaging in trauma response, and engaging with our community groups. Community groups that, by the way, have been doing this work for a long time and that have a proven track record of making a difference in our communities, like Tree of Life Ministries and the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Trauma Response Team and Project Right. Here, uh, Joe Janazek, he is the chief of our uh, Crime Strategies Bureau. Uh, he, like Terry, uh, labored together with me long in this vineyard. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to him to talk a little bit more about uh, the funding that we're going to be using, how we'll employ it. Thank you, Mr. TA. And uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary. Um, just very briefly, um, community is the center of this and that word should not be overlooked um, and I we appreciate so administration to community so we modeled our 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 response around community uh, because we don't do things to the community we do things with the community uh, for the community so one of the fundamental concepts that we put to together uh, focuses around exactly what everyone around this table has talked about, which is youth engagement, uh, identification of issues uh, with kids, trauma. Uh, these are all precursors. These are all uh, inputs that will be predictive. And if we can get to kids early enough, um, we will be preventive. Um, but the law enforcement piece um, really we really tried to focus around community as well and so what we're doing is dedicating a district court prosecutor to be a response prosecutor along the model that that we all came up with um, secretary and, and da hayden uh, in the suffolk da's office that has been year over decade, over decade to be effective um, to understand what level understand whether it is a trespass or a shooting to be responsive to that to have an individual in our district court who will give feedback to that community who whose individuals have reported this right uh, I know for instance one of our, our large developments um, 
I attended a meeting earlier in the summer. The residents are really held almost hostage uh, in this development right now by folks coming from outside that development, cannot come in and out without being harassed. Um, so we've, th this funding has come along at a tremendous time for us because we were able to then take those neighborhood complaints um, and convert that into real action, uh, not only prosecutorially, but also through these wraparound services, Project Right, decades, literally three decades of proven service. Uh, uh, Tree of Life uh, working directly inside the Mildred Haley development. Uh, Jamaica Plain neighborhood trauma um, working with individuals in the communities around trauma response um, to not only intervene in what we're seeing, which is a very disturbing trend uh, in youth recruitment, specifically uh, younger and younger kids, 12, 13 year old kids being recruited by uh, individuals to insulate themselves, to drive that wedge, to not make that attractive to those kids, and at the same time hold those individuals accountable who are driving that activity. Huge. Um, the fact that this is a sustained effort, this isn't a flash in the pan, that the, the administration has shown commitment um, to sustained year over year uh, investment in these communities, that is going to be paying dividends for, for decades to come. So, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm District Attorney Dave Sullivan, and I'm from the Northwestern District, which is uh, Hampshire and Franklin counties, um, and also the town of uh, Athol. Uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you, thank you Kevin Stanton, and, and your team that really worked so hard to organize these grant applications and, and make those awards. Um, I think everybody, when they were walking in this morning, uh, saw one of the, the best things you can see: a bunch of kids playing hoop. The kids out in the field, keeping kids busy, and keep not just busy, but in a good way, because you're lifting these kids up. They have something that they can feel proud about, but something also that they're taking from that experience. And so many of our kids, have board, it's almost like you'd have a mental health uh, crisis uh, in any town because kids have just been really impacted by COVID and all the things that pressure them today. And um, what I can say about our grantee, I don't think Jennifer Gordon's here yet. She's the CEO of, of AFOL, uh, YMCA. But what's really important about the grantee, um, the AFOL Y, is they're a regional Y. They help um, hundreds and hundreds of kids in the North Quad, and, and that is a disadvantaged community. It's at that, that, that there's just no industry. They've lost a lot of it. Um, the kids are stressed by substance use disorder. Um, these families are under tremendous strain. And the, the grant that was made um, was to help this why take in more kids. And of course, we all know you can't charge anything. If you do, you're not, if you charge a dollar to this family, they're not going to be able to afford it. And be able to take care of about 150, 200 kids this summer uh, with a variety of programs, because as you know, just what a great uh, Boys and Girls Cup you have. Beautiful, and you know, hopefully I'm going to walk around later and really see everything about it. But so much of that formative youth, because I remember it was Fred Tambucci. He was the CYO uh, director. And we all have people in our lives, and we need that trusted adult, that, that, that person that stands out for us. And at the Y, they take in so many kids, but they treat them individually, and they help them with a lot of things. There's the arts, the athletics, um, but it's also that mentoring. And I think that's so important. So I'd like to quote uh, one of my favorite DAs, DA Early. I only knew your father a little bit, so I can't quote him. It is better to prevent a crime than to prosecute one. And we know that all the work that we're doing in this room today is going to have dividends, not only for today, but for the many tomorrows ahead, because safe kids thrive. And Mary, you started a, a, a program years ago on the head, that having a safe environment 
a nurturing environment is going to pay so many dividends down the road. And quite frankly, that 98% statistic of all the kids that have flourished in this environment here at the Boys and Girls Club, going on to another level of education is just tremendous. It really is. And compliments to you and your staff for, for doing all that, uh, that work. Um, <clears throat> So um, I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, we all know that these youth programs are going to happen. And, and, and again, thank you uh, for providing the funds, uh, Governor. Um, on the safer communities, um, we're fortunate that 10 years ago um, uh, we started an anti-crime task force that was actually modeled after the Berkshire one because we have so many rural communities, uh, 47 communities, and there really isn't a major city in the lot. I mean, maybe you know, Amherst with 40,000 and Northampton with 30. So alone, these police departments, these 47 police departments plus the Mass State Police, they can't really get much done. A force multiplier. And uh, in this case, uh, we have an anti-crime unit with three state troopers and 12 to 14 um, local police. And so this goes toward uh, money that will help them target uh, both uh, drug distribution, but also human trafficking. They've been very impactful on, on working with the Attorney General's on the human trafficking case. And so being able to provide that overtime to the local police departments is essential. They're on tight budgets. And have been used and how uh, we hope that the funding will, uh, these programs will grow, not only this year, but uh, I want to announce uh, the high, uh, our work with um, uh, tech schools in Plymouth County, uh, particularly by our, our work in the four vocational schools, working with the High Point Treatment Center, creating what we call shop classes, uh, essentially 101, 201 uh, level shop classes with students that particularly focus on uh, how their particular trade and work, the potential uh, with uh, substance abuse uh, related to their uh, profession, which is uh, obviously, as we know, different than the education potentially uh, path um, uh, taken. Uh, that feedback has been uh, tremendously positive, and uh, this year our goal is, after hearing back from these students, is those students want to hear about how their particular trade, what are the potential addiction pitfalls of their particular trade. And so our work this year has been to develop a particular curriculum at the what we call the 300 level, uh, particularly focused on individual students uh, can learn about um, uh, can learn about how uh, you know particularly professionals in trade that have high rates of injuries that lead to uh, unfortunately potential um, exposure to opioids and reliance on opioids. Uh, I also want to talk about um, our Hoop Alliance a Mentoring Summer Hoops program. It began in the summer of 2014. It takes uh, individuals between the ages of 13 and 18 from Brockton. Um, so you may know, Brockton High School is the largest high school. Uh, uh, it represents individuals of over 4,500, 76 of which identify as minorities. Uh, it takes, and, it, and the program takes uh, individuals from the Brockton community, particularly individuals uh, that went on to college and even the pros uh, with basketball, and, and educates them and, and uh, to mentor these individuals about uh, not only making right choices, but you know, the importance of, of GPA, uh, doing well in school, trying hard in school, uh, and the importance of character, consistency, and level of effort. Uh, those classes. Monday evenings, and then there are games, uh, particularly three levels, a kind of elite division, a 18-under um, division, 15-under division that occur throughout the week uh, during the summer. Uh, and, and what's particularly exciting, uh, especially as someone, from the perspective of someone who was not the most athletic or skilled basketball player growing up, is that we're looking to expand the program this year, not only from 165 teams to 108, over 180, but adding it will be focused toward prevention activities, but also towards uh, law enforcement activities to uh, be able to give the uh, police the opportunity to, as discussed earlier, build stronger cases, uh, to focus uh, particularly efforts and resources towards um, uh, high uh, priority impact players that uh, 
bring in guns and drugs into the Brockton community. Uh, finally, I would note uh, last year uh, during the summer initiative, um, uh, and I, I want to emphasize this, the secretary did that one victim is one victim too many. Uh, but uh, due, uh, due to the collaboration with this program, uh, that there were eight firearms, 621 grams of heroin and fentanyl, 533 grams of cocaine or crack cocaine uh, seized uh, last year, thanks with the partnership of this initiative. Uh, and that's uh, the city of Brockton percent decrease in the number of firearm-related homicides for the months of July, August, and September 2022. And the city as a whole experienced a 17 percent decrease in the number of aggregate aggravated assaults, excuse me, with a firearm compared to 2021. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chief Brenda Perez Brockton. On behalf of all Brocktonians and Mayor Sullivan, I'd like to thank you, Governor and Secretary Reedy and all elected officials for your support. Our collaboration and partnership with the DA's office, the Mass State Police and our community partners is instrumental in our efforts to be to help and reduce our youth violence. Providing um, outreach, mentoring, a jobs program that includes a financial education piece, a trauma-informed counseling, clinicians, recovery coach, our, our youth academy, our junior cadet program, and many recreational opportunities uh, for our youth are all force, force multipliers for our Brockton's youth. We want to be able to provide our youth with what they need, whether that is counseling through um, martial arts or whether that is a recreational activity or that or that is a job opportunity so that they can get their own things we want to be able to provide them with what they need uh, this would not be possible without grants without support or without the, the law enforcement support that we share with the state police with the da's office and without community partnerships so it really is a team effort um, that we have a really good work a relationship with our partners, um, with the community, with our law enforcement partners, and with your office is literally instrumental in getting those efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone who presented today, uh, seeing all the great work that the county is doing. Our final speaker uh, is going to be, if you don't know him already, probably the most popular person in the world, Kevin Stanton, Research. Kevin and his team foundation of these things that I've mentioned about. And I know we have a, a hard stop at 12.30, but I'm going to turn it over to Kevin real briefly and uh, let me try to steal him from me. Here's Kevin Stanton. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Um, and also thank you to all the partners, the district attorneys, and their partners from the communities. Um, I'll be very brief. I know we're really short on time. Um, I just want to also thank my staff who are here as well, a handful of them that make all these grant awards happen. It's a lot of work uh, that goes on behind the scenes to roll these funds out. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, the Office of Grants and Research, we're the state administering agency for public safety for funds received from the Department of Justice, uh, from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Um, we we manage probably about $150 million annually in state and federal funding for all sorts of stuff, including what we're all here for today. Um, really brief, I just want to announce that we do have other funds available right now. We have the uh, Burn Justice System grant available for local municipalities to apply for. And uh, we have $2.5 million available and uh, cities and towns can apply for up to $50,000. So it can address things that we're addressing here today, gang, gun violence, um, drugs, uh, human trafficking, missing uh, persons cases, crimes, you name it. This grant has a lot of priorities, so I encourage you all to take a look at that if you need additional funding to expand services um, or for, for other needs that, you're, that you have. Uh, we also will be um, unveiling about $5 million in the fall, um, also in Burn uh, State Crisis Intervention Program funding. So that's part of the Biden administration's initiative to uh, reduce uh, gun, to enhance gun safety and reduce gun violence in the country. So uh, that uh, will be going on probably late fall, um, and we'll be able to address a lot of uh, the issues that we're talking about here today as well, um, as well as uh, first responder safety and wellness programs that are impacted severely by uh, gun violence and uh, the needs in the community. So 
Again, um, I don't want to hold everybody up. I know that uh, it's real time sensitive. I'm going to hand it back over to the uh, secretary and the governor. Thank you, Kevin. Um, there was an initiative a couple years ago about, uh, in Massachusetts during the election cycle of what does a DA do? Uh, and I'm going to editorialize it. The DAs in this state are cutting edge. They know what needs to be done in their communities. They're innovative. They know they have to balance arrests with being proactive with preventing crime. Uh, and I think all of you in this room who have seen the presentations from each of our DAs and the DAs who aren't here that couldn't make it because they do the same thing. They're making a difference. This is what DAs in Massachusetts do. And I want to thank you all for, for, for being here. And I recognize probably more than a lot of people the great work that you and your staffs all do to keep people safe. Um, with that, uh, I want to turn it over for final remarks to Governor Healy. Thank you, Governor. No. Uh, thanks, Secretary. And Terry, you've done a fantastic job um, supporting, supporting law enforcement and just instilling and fostering the, the ever need for, for partnership and collaboration. So I thank you and the EOPS team. I want to thank you, Kevin, in particular, and to all the grant writers out there. This is hard work. It's technical. You got to do, you know, it's, it's a lot to put these things together. We want to make it worth it. We set up a federal office, so we're chasing every federal dollar that's out there. And we want that money to come in and then go out to all of you. So thank you on your teams for working with folks like Kevin um, to, help make this, to help make this possible. And uh, I'm just struck by, by the good and what's possible. Those numbers, Liz, are really powerful, you know, and what, what little it takes to change the life trajectory of a young person. When you think about it and you think about big numbers and big programs, but at the end of the day, how do you get a van? You need a van? We get you a van. You need cell service? We shouldn't have police officers having to buy radios in the state. How do we fix that? And I could go down the list of the things that I've heard today um, and know that all that is, I know how important it is and the focus that each of you have on one child, one life, one opportunity is something that we recognize, that I recognize, and we must not lose sight of. So keep coming at us with not just grant applications, um, we'll continue to work in partnership, whether it's on community programming or on wires uh, and the resources you need, but also just like identifying things that you need. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about social determinants. You know, we're working on Medicaid waivers so that we can get more covered because so much of what materializes and we know that you see coming through your doors has to do with true social determinants of health and well-being, housing, jobs, food security, and the like. And that is something that we, you know, as a whole team are really, really invested in. Thank you, um, and thank you to law enforcement for the work that you do. You have our support. I'll be going to a graduation shortly, Colonel, uh, for our state police. Um, know that we continue to, to put the word out. We need we need great community policing partners out there. We need to support law enforcement and their work, uh, while at the same time we support the community organizations who are out there working hand in hand to deliver um, opportunity, resources, and I think hope. Hope is the word. Um, and I think we'll end on that today. And again, thank you so much for hosting us, Liz, here. Thank you, DA Early, in particular, uh, for, uh, for having us in the heart of the Commonwealth. Um, and I wish everybody a safe uh, and, and happy uh, and healthy summer and, uh, and best, uh, best wishes with all that you do. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.